If you thought racism just happens in America, think again. I'm black, black. and I live in Scotland. From age five, I was told everything black is bad. In primary two, I was called a black cow. Now, moving on to high school, I was present in an incident where um, students were making monkey noises at the teacher. Popped into a local shop to kind of get, get a few things. And, you know, it was a really bad winter that year. And I remember the shop assistant behind the till immediately said, you know, you wouldn't have experiences whether where you're from. So I said, oh, actually, I'm from London, so I have experiences weather before. So immediately that person got really kind of annoyed with me and said, oh, I'm just making small talk. I left my stuff at the till, walked out and never used that shop again. The girls in my class, they used to make fun of me. They used to make fun of my skin colour, the way I talk, the way I dress, my hair. The bell rang for lunch and I left my class and I went round the corner uh, to see that my sister stood in between these two girls with a rope tied around her neck and each girl had a bit of rope on each side but with that they were pulling, essentially choking her. Um, the playground assistants stood by and watched only when I went in to intervene did the adults in the playground go in to intervene. I was about 16, walking home from school, and there were two white men walking towards me, probably in their 20s. And they smiled. Um, and as I walked past them, one of them said to the other, she's all right for a coon. It is probably the most offensive, most insulting word you can use to identify or describe a black person going back to slavery. I have been going through a hate crime where someone has been giving me abuse daily about the colour of my skin, how I look and anything that I do. I have been terrorised, I have been shouted in the streets, I have been attacked, I have been spat on outside my house. I have tried to reach out and get help about this. The situation has been happening for over two and a half years and I have received not very much help from authorities, housing or police. I've been asked to make myself homeless, even after making them aware of what has been happening. I got a graduate job and one of my colleagues told me that the reason why I'd got that job was because I was black. And when you as a black person hear over and over and over again that you have got a job because you're black when you know that that's not the reason why it actually demeans the hard work that you put in and it also makes you doubt yourself i came out of the club in sterling i was witness to like a group of guys who were fighting all white guys who were fighting i was not part of why the police were called um, but I was the only one who was getting uh, talked to in that way and I was the only one who was kind of picked out uh, from a situation I had nothing to do with. Um, so yeah, man, racism is alive and, uh, alive and well in Scotland and it's unfortunate. I've experienced racism throughout my whole life. Um, when I was younger in the park, a little kid called me chocolate biscuit. People calling me not even the correct ethnicity, which is hilarious. Um, I mean, I'm laughing at it, but actually it's not, it's not funny. Also gone through the appalling way schools have dealt with the slave trade by just showing roots and a couple of PowerPoints and letting their students run around calling themselves Kunta Kinte and asking me such questions like, are you, you're probably related to Kunta Kinte, completely degrading me. I am not just of colour, uh, but also an immigrant from South Africa. Um, when people heard my accent when I was little, I used to have a South African accent. Um, they used to ask if I had lions or zebras in my back garden. Um, and when I moved to high school, people would often call me uh, half-caste, uh, mulatto, and <laughs> African, even though my whole family and their descendants were born in Africa. Um, and up until the end of my school career, really, uh, people would call me Warburton's 50-50. We went out to a bar in Edinburgh on um, the Royal Mile, so, you know, very popular bar. Um, and as soon as we walked in, they said no. And I was like, no what? Like, you're not open? Or <laughs> I laughed but it's not funny. I think you you either laugh or you go insane. Um, and they're like, no, we're not serving you. And I was like, oh, it's okay. Like, I don't mind not drinking. It's more for my partner. 
and they were like, no, get out. I was probably about 13, 14, and I was just walking up to the shop for my mum, and there was a girl who started following me, and I think she was just trying to intimidate me. So she then stood in front of me and called me a black bitch um, to my face. Um, yeah, walking down the street as a teenager was never really the same after that. I always had the fear. I was with my white boyfriend and um, this man uses the N-word with the heart R to ask my boyfriend if he likes people of colour. I would be at school and parents and children would come up to me basically and because my mum's white um, they would say, they would ask me if I was adopted, um, if that was a nanny when I was attending my uncle's funeral and we were all in the family room and the funeral director um, came up to me, asked why I was there and why I was in the family room. Obviously could not comprehend that I was mixed race and that that was my family obviously because they were white. From as young as about six years old I've experienced racism um, all the way up to a point last year when I got called in the street being told to go back to where I came from. I was about 15 I was chosen to be part of um, quite an interesting campaign. A rumour started circulating that I had only got the part because I was the token black participant. I didn't get it because of my talent. I didn't get it because of anything else. The start of high school, maybe S1, S2, um, they thought I was carrying weed on me. They obviously smelled it in the class somehow. And I was the only black person in the class, funnily enough. And I'm the one that gets taken out first. Uh, I get searched by the teacher. He's making a big fuss. Um, I had dreads. I probably looked like the second coming of Bob Marley to the teachers. And then when I got to the next class, um, I got taken out again by the head teacher and the teacher from the previous class, and the teacher from the class that was that like I just went to, so the second class that I was at. So three teachers were out here searching my bags, found nothing, and I told my mum she was absolutely raging, like she was fuming, and um, she wrote a letter to the school and I tried to hand it to the teachers and they were just like, oh, we don't have time for this, we don't need to listen to this. You know, I've got better things to do. So. Comments like, you're pretty for a black girl. Um, your people aren't necessarily good looking, are they? Um, you're so exotic, but in a fetishizing way, which became clear as soon as the conversation carried on a bit. When I was around four years old, I was walking back from the shop with my mum and my older brother and a man was crossing the road at the same time as us and he must have seen the bananas poking out of our shopping bags and he um, started shouting at us saying like ha 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 look at those monkeys with their bananas um, he seemed to find the whole thing uh, highly entertaining and throughout um, primary and high school I had numerous racist incidents more than I could um, explain like so so many and often those racist incidents when I did report them were not dealt with appropriately. I worked in this corporate organisation tech recruiting company in Glasgow and this woman like we were out and she touched into my hair and I was like please don't touch my hair because I'm not anyone's property. She started crying and everyone was like oh my gosh like please to her and I was like <laughs> I think it was about 16. I was at a shopping centre before I met up with my friends just looking around window shopping when I noticed this guy was just staring at me. Looked up again and he was still staring at me it, with a look in his eye that I've never forgot until this day. He just looked at me with disdain. So I kept trying to avoid him eventually just running into a bathroom, into a bathroom stall for an hour literally crying because I didn't understand and ever since that day it's changed me in a way. My young son age six came home one day and told me that a boy from school had said that his skin looked like poo because it was brown. This child that he said had said this to him was in P6. It really saddened me but didn't surprise me that everyone that I reached out to to be on this video had experienced racism. 
It's down to us all to look at our own behaviours and hold ourselves and others accountable. I hope that Nicola Sturgeon takes this video seriously because the education system obviously has its flaws. It's really important that black history is taught properly within schools and that racism is not tolerated with teachers or pupils. I hope that Police Scotland make a change in the way that they deal with racist hate crimes. If you want to help make black history taught in schools properly, there will be a link to donate in the description. There will also be other resources that you can check out for the black Scottish experience. And if you have actually dealt with racism yourself, I will also put a link in there on how to report racism to the police. Black people shouldn't have to live like this in Scotland or anywhere in the world. Think of your unconscious biases, educate yourself on structural and systemic racism, and seek to be part of the end of this problem.